So, you read the story of the little boy in nature and be motivated. That's why we write, uh, we write these things for you to, uh, to bring hope and motivation to everyone. So in this lecture today, we are going to introduce the idea of uh, isospin. And chapter three is dedicated to isospin in our, in our lecture notes. Or what is the same thing is the uh, charge independence is also called independence. of the uh, nuclear force. So basically, this implies that we're going to be treating protons and neutrons as the same particle, independent of the charge that the proton has. Uh, we're going to be calling these two guys nucleons, right? And this was an idea an idea introduced in 1932 by, by Heisenberg, the guy of the uncertainty, uncertainty principle, right? And it was introduced by Heisenberg because it turns out that during that same year, there was a discovery of the neutron. Discovery of the neutron happened in 1932. Oh, sorry, the neutron. And to treat things, uh, to be uh, uh, simple, to apply uh, simple mathematics, to treat the, the problem always in a simpler way, it was a, an interesting notion to assume that protons and neutrons were exactly the same particle, always assuming that there's a charge independence of the nuclear force. But we know this is not a pure symmetry. Sometimes as a spin is called as a spin symmetry. But it's not, not a pure symmetry because as we know, uh, is broken by the uh, is broken by the Coulomb force, right? Broken by the Coulomb force. So it's not a pure symmetry. What we is call it, uh, what we call it, is an approximate symmetry. Right? Approximate symmetry. But it's going to simplify mathematics. It's going to make a a, a very interesting, um, very interesting uh, insight into into nuclear physics. Uh, here we are going to get into it. Uh, by going to the chapter, to the isospin chapter, which is which is chapter three, isospin symmetry, right? So as I was saying, the idea of isospin is um, is not a real thing. It's a something something fictitious. You know, it's just a mathematical approximation to treat proton and neutrons as the same particle called a, a nucleon. But as a, um, Sir Dennis Wilkinson wrote in his book, which I have uh, here. This book is probably also in the library. It would be nice to get it's a thick book. You see, here we go. The, the editor is this guy, Wilkinson. Uh, it's a spin in nuclear physics. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's uh, signed by the same person, by the same uh, Sir uh, uh, Dennis Wilkinson, with regards and uh, on, on every encouragement, Dennis Wilkinson. So this guy wrote down that a suspin has a certain fascination, as is perhaps to be expected of something that is so rich, so well studied, that is so familiar to us, and yet, which does not exist, right? This mathematical approximation, as I say, was uh, introduced by Heisenberg 
using the opportunity that the neutron was just discovered in 1932 by James uh, Chadwick. And in the lecture notes, you have different references where you can go and check. So Werner Heisenberg introduced the idea of isospin, proposed that both the proton and the neutron might be regarded as alternative states, at least for mathematical purposes. Uh, and then uh, Schwinger realized that a suspend symmetry could be described by a particular algebra uh, in group theory. And this allowed the treatment of proton and neutrons as two manifestations of the same particle called the nuclear. Okay. And then there were, um, obviously, when you introduce this, you always have to keep in mind that proton and neutrons and nucleons, they are fermions. And the total wave function, which represents a fermion, must be antisymmetric. And we'll go through this uh, a little bit later. And it was assumed that the nuclear force is assumed to be the same for proton and neutrons. But uh, this was not entirely true, because uh, as you have uh, more protons and uh, more neutrons, you know, the, 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 there's something called the shell model. And we we'll go through the shell model later on, but this is one to to relate the shell model to isospin. And we learn, we learn in our next lecture on two lectures time, that uh, we have a building for protons and a building for neutrons. And the building looks exactly the same. These are the floors. And, um, uh, okay, let's make it just, uh, sorry. Let's make it, here we go, one and two, and then one, two, and three, right? And we learned that this is the zero S one half, this is a zero P three half, this is the zero P one half, and this is the zero D five half. <clears throat> this will be the, the one S one half, and this will be the zero T three half. And the same thing here, the same thing here, zero D three half, one S one half, zero D five half. So these are for, for protons here and neutrons. And this will be the zero S one half, and this will be the zero P three half, and then this will be the zero p one half. This is a, the flow where we are going to have the protons and neutrons living in, right? They will be, uh, they will be um, a particular building, which we call the shell model. There are more, more, more floors up there. We keep uh, adding neighbors and, and protons and neutrons in a way which follows the Pauli exclusion principle. So this is a little bit of introduction, a little bit of a preliminary introduction to the shell model. And in this particular case, we have that in this case, the occupancy will be two protons. Here we have four. And again, this will come because of the Pauli principle only allows, uh, only allows particles to have different quantum numbers. You have the same quantum number, then you cannot live in the same flow. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. One and two. And here one, two, three, four. And for neutrons, it will be something similar. Uh, one here, two here, one, two, three, four, one, two. So you see, we see that there's some kind of isospin symmetry, which is manifested in a way, uh, another one here, uh, let's put it here. One and two, and one, two, three, four, right? And we'll see that these magic numbers, this uh, shell model has special magic numbers for nuclei to be extra stable. And these magic numbers will be here too. Here we have eight, here will be 20, 20, eight, two, 
And uh, somehow we, last week, we learned from the harmonic oscillator that uh, we are we're going to link that next, next week. But uh, these are special magic numbers because uh, a nucleus, you know, like for instance, oxygen 16. Oxygen 16. Uh, let me put some green here. I like this pistachio green. Oxygen 16 will be a, a building like this. Where you have eight protons and eight neutrons, right? So oxygen 16 will be uh, particularly stable because these guys, to be excited, they need to move up there and they need to cross this shell, this energy here. Right? So these guys will be particularly stable. So someone is raising the hand. Let me just stop sharing here. Uh, Siayola, Siayola, what, what do you need? <clears throat> no, Prof, don't stop sharing. Uh, I think I'm lost somewhere here. Okay, you're lost somewhere here. So, yes. Yeah, One let me blue and red. Okay. So, okay, these are, these are, okay, let me, uh, the thing is, I just want to briefly introduce the shell model. And what I'm saying here is that these guys, these guys, they are protons and there are two protons too. here, there are two neutrons here. So each ball here is a, is a proton. And each ball here is a neutron, right? And they have particular uh, occupancies which depend on the, um, on the Pauli exclusion principle. It's good that you stopped me because uh, I just wanted to introduce this and the occupancy goes like this, two J plus one, where J is this number here. But I don't want to go through this too much right now. I want to focus on the isospin. We will see this long enough next time. I just want to show for the first time. So next time we see this, it's not so surprising. Basically, here we have, uh, if j here is one half, right? One half. So we put one j one half here uh, times two will be one plus one, two. So we have two particles. Okay. So this will be the occupancy. And we learn why. Because these guys, they have different uh, spins pointing up and down. So they may have the same L. This is L. Remember, L is equal to S, P, D, F, G. This is uh, N. And uh, we'll see here, you know, I don't want to say anymore. This is uh, basically obeying the Pauli exclusion, exclusion principle, Pauli uh, exclusion principle. And I want to say here only the following, that this level, I, I draw them in a particular way, they are not the same. They look the same, but you see these neutron guys are deeper in the potential than the proton guys. You see, I, 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 I draw them in a way that these guys always, they look like the same building, but this building, this building here has, uh, is deeper, right? Than this building here. So by meaning that uh, the neutrons in our potential, the neutrons uh, will be deeper in the potential, in the harmonic oscillator potential, say, than the proton. The protons will be slightly, for the same level, for the same flow, the protons will be a little bit higher than the neutrons. I mean, less bound, right? Less bound. The deeper you are, the deeper you are, the more bound you are, right? But because of the, of the protons having a positive charge, the more positive charges you are, you have here, uh, as you increase the, the, the protons, there will be a repulsion, right? And this repulsion is manifested right here. And the purpose of this exercise was to briefly introduce the shell model for later. But the main thing was to tell you, look, look guys, this guy is less, less bound 
than this guy, uh, the only reason is the, the number of protons, right? So obviously the more protons, the less bound it will be. The, so the neutrons for the same particular flow, right? For the same particular flow, they will be lower, a little bit lower than the protons. So by this, I want to say that the isospin symmetry is an approximate symmetry because the neutrons are not exactly the same as the protons, right? This is what's the whole exercise of drawing this uh, shell model, but I'm going to explain this in more detail. I just want to have a, a first, first flash, okay, of this building that we're going to be uh, learning a lot in the, in the next lectures. Um, okay, guys, just, I just want to, you to have a first view of this building. This is how, how we, the how protons and neutrons live together, say. We can only put two protons on the first floor. We can only have four protons and four neutrons in the second floor. Two neutrons and two protons on the third floor and so on and so forth. There's a gap here. So this is a particular building, which is that doesn't have, you know, like we see buildings around us, you know, the same distance between floors, right? So this is a, a kind of crazy building, one here, then there's a big gap, then you have two, two narrow floors there, and there's another gap. So basically this is the building of nuclei, the shell model, how you, how they are, um, how they are placed within the nucleus. All right, so, but today, as uh, we are discussing, we're going to focus, our main focus in, on, is on isospin symmetry. And for that, we go here. Uh, the uh, isospin symmetry, or the same thing, charge independence of the nuclear force. Um, you know, you can read these things. The isospin quantum number is, uh, is called T, right? So there's a spin uh, symmetry, there's a spin quantum number is T. And we're going to open a new, a new page. And while we open a new page, we're going to see, you know, what um, assignment number one, I want you to, to read through this, how the neutron was discovered. I want you to learn how these, these things happen. And then we're going to learn a little bit more on this, uh, isospin picture. Then you have the experimental evidence for isospin. So you will have that the, the low energy neutron, proton, 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 and neutron, neutron interactions are of equal strength for these T equal one states. And we're going to learn what is a T equal one state right now. Um, before uh, we learn about this experimental evidence, we are actually going to learn what is T equal one and T equal zero. Uh, And for that, we are going to, uh, to go directly to the concept. So when this is just formalism, I want you to go through that, but let's go to the concept here. And we're going to remember the idea of the deuteron. We have a, a deuteron-like structure, which, uh, which is, is just two protons, two neutrons, or one proton and one neutron. We're going to have the possibility to have deuteron-like, so we're going to have uh, either uh, two protons, and as you can see, two protons, let's say two protons here. Obviously the spin, the spin must be equal to zero, right? Because this has S one half, all of them has S one half, but they are, in opposite directions, they are anti-parallel, right? So then um, the, the total spin number, the total spin total will be S equal to zero. And then we have uh, one proton here and one neutron, where you can have the same kind of uh, structure. Let's put this guy here and let's write the proton on red. Let's distinguish them. And here we have two neutrons. And again, the same situation where you have uh, the spins pointing up and down, 
So for each of these guys, S is equal to zero, right? S is equal to zero here, S is equal to zero here. Correct? That's clear, right? Because the spins are anti-parallel, right? Luasi, is this, is this clear? Basically, we're just having a two nucleon system. Guys, before we move forward, is this clear? Yeah, I think it does. Regarding shooting, let's, let's go. Just, uh, Siayola, you have a, a hand raised there. Uh, do, you, do you want to know anything? You want to ask? Your hand is from before, no? Yeah. So, yes, prof. Okay. Uh, so, basically, we are having two, two particles and they are coupled up and down, right? So, the total spin, which each uh, spin for, a, for, a, for each fermion is one half. So, one half minus one half will be zero, right? So, we have three possibilities, three possibilities. But we need to have an anti-symmetric wave function. And to have an anti-symmetric wave function, the total, uh, the product of the wave functions must be odd. So in this particular case, let's share the screen. Well, we are going to introduce uh, the isospin quantum number, t. And this t is going to be 1 or 0. In this particular case, will be one because uh, we have zero and we have one. So we make sure that the total, total wave function is... Sorry, Prof. Tell me. So that you know that uh, sometimes S becomes one or zero. Right. But we do determine that when do you know, when we know the parity. Now that you don't know the parity, how do you know that uh, S is zero? Okay, uh, we know that S is zero because uh, that's a good question. But let's go back down here and show it to you. So we have this guy is S one half, right? Actually, plus is S one half, and this guy is also S one half, right? But this guy is pointing up and this guy is pointing down. So the total S, which is S1, let's call this S1, and this guy S2, you know, plus S2 is equal to the total, you know, S will be zero here. If this guy is pointing up, the spin is pointing up, then the total S1 plus S2 will be equal to one, right? So S will be equal to one. S will be zero for anti-parallel, spins, right? And for parallel spins, then we have S equal to one. Correct? Uh, Is that clear? Perfect. Good. So that's why here, all these three states, all these three states, they have S equal to zero and to make it anti-symmetric, when we introduce the isospin, t must be equal to one because zero and zero, even and even, give you a, a symmetric, an even function. So the total wave function must be anti-symmetric, which you need to have an odd number here. Okay, so we are talking about having, uh, again, proton and neutrons uh, protons and neutrons pointing up and down. And this is just the picture. However, there's yet another picture for this particular case. When you have one proton, one neutron, we can have this guy actually also. There's another possibility. And we can have this guy. And for this particular case, we can also have the spins pointing up here. 
and the spin is pointing up there, right? Because these are different particles. So they're not the same particle. One is a proton, right? And the other one is a neutron. So the spins can be, these two quantum numbers can be the same because they're not the same particle. So for this particular case, we have the situation where the spins add up to one, and which imply that T must be equal to zero, right? So these guys here is called the is called the triplet. Triplet of isobaric analogs. And this guy is simply called a singlet, right? Because a singlet, because there's only one way. Obviously, we cannot have uh, two protons pointing up because then you have the same quantum number, right? So this is not allowed. And the same thing here, you cannot have two neutrons pointing up because they are the same particle. That's not allowed according to the, to the Pauli, Pauli's ex exclusion principle, right? Is that correct? Are we following now? So now we are going to see this in real life. Now we're going to see this in real life and we're going to investigate. The best thing is that we do it uh, ourselves and we go to the NNDC, for instance. Let's go to the NNDC here. You have the, the, the example of This example of these guys, these guys, but I want to see these guys here. You see calcium 42, scanning 42, titanium 42. Okay, so these guys will have, as you can see, very clearly, these are, uh, this is the two neutron system. All of them, they have 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, but there's a two extra protons here, the extra two neutrons here, and there's an extra proton, an extra neutron here. So basically, this is the same situation as we have here. So now we are going to look at the at the two. So we have introduced as a spin, you know, by means of having an antisymmetric wave function. So the t quantum number is equal to one. We have a knot as a spin when s is equal to zero, and as a spin is equal to zero when S is equal to one, when the spins are pointing up. But that particular case only happens for the, uh, when you have protons and neutrons, right? When you have different particles. Guys, questions? Okay, let's follow up. So now we have the situation here. So prof. Tell me. Uh, it means like if we have t is equal to zero, we have two to wave function uh, which is symmetry. When when t is equal to zero, s must be equal to one. Always there must be an odd odd number, right? Mm -hmm. The product the product of the product of the two must be odd. Always always we, we must satisfy that the total wave function of when when fermions are involved, it must be and the symmetric. And for that to happen, the product of these two must be always equal to, to an odd number, right? Okay. Any chuti? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's, okay. Now so now we go here and say, okay, look, let's look at this at these guys. So let's say that 2020, 2020, 2020 doesn't affect nothing. But here, there's an extra two. This is two neutrons. Here, we have one proton and one neutron. And here, there's an extra two is here in the two protons. So we have the same situation here. Now let's compare one with the other. So in this particular case, and I'm going to write this in a, in a special, uh, let's see what this guy does here. Okay, this guy is doing something strange, but <laughs> I like it. So let's look at this guy, what this does. All oh, these fellows, 
all these fellows up a little bit too strong here okay and here this triplet means that the nucleus having two protons and now we are relating uh we say this is 42 calcium with Ah, sorry, sorry, that's not the, the, the two protons. Let me see. That's 42 titanium. Uh, 42 titanium here. Let's bring this a little bit down. Uh, but not so much. So we don't lose the 42 titanium is 22 protons and 20 neutrons. This guy is called uh, 42 scandium with 21 protons and 21 neutrons. And this guy is 42 calcium with 20 protons and 22 neutrons. So they take these twos, these twos and these twos, and we are going to compare with this picture. So let's look at the triplet. So what we see is the following guys, and this is very, very interesting. So look at this, this is the, scan, the calcium 42, and look the comparison between calcium 42 and actually titanium 42. Actually, I always forget to change this four, but this four should be a six. This four is a six. So basically we have zero, which is the ground state, zero energy, but you know, there's no zero energy. This is the binding energy as a reference, zero. So 1.56 MeV above the, the binding energy, above the zero, the ground state, four, four, six, six. This should be a six as well. So as you can see, the energies, the levels are quite similar. So you see here and here. For two different nuclei, we see that they are very similar. So what is, what is the nucleus doing here? How the protons are and the two neutrons are aligned with each other. So we see that the two protons here are pointing up and down. In these particular states, the two neutrons are pointing up and down. And you can see here in the third one, in the scandium 42, that we also have zero, two, four, and six. So you see. And we know here that we have proton and neutrons, two proton, one proton and one neutron aligned up and down. So I want you to see the similar picture here. These three guys, these three guys, this guy is the titanium 42 with the two protons pointing up and down. This guy is the uh, scandium 42 with one proton, one neutron pointing up down. And these are the two neutrons pointing up down, right? So it is actually quite beautiful. And I want you to, 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 to emphasize, to think about it. Now, when we look at how a nucleus gets excited, we can see that simple picture right here. Same number, same structure, same structure, same structure. Six, four, two, zero. Six, four, two, zero. This is six, although it has, I, have, I have a four there, six, four, two, zero. This is a pattern which is the beauty of isospin. All these levels have S equal zero and T equal one. All these levels here that we are calling, they are T equal one states. This, this, and this six, four, six, four, two, zero. They are all T equal one states. Now, for this guy, particular guy, for scanning 42, we have extra levels. We have these guys, right? We have these guys, which are not here or here, right? We have the one plus, the seven plus, the three plus, and the five plus. These guys are not here or here, right? They are only here. So what is, what is the nucleus doing there? Nucleus. As you can see here, he's doing what? 
how are the protons and neutrons being aligned for these particular states? Okay, Prof, I think for calcium, for calcium 42, yeah, um, A is equal to zero and two. Yeah, sorry? I was, I was saying like for calcium 42. Uh, for calcium 42, this one? Yeah, the first one. So uh, um, total wavelength is anti anti-symmetry. And for the second one, for I think the one you got uh this one. Uh, the second one. The second one. Second one. No, uh, no, in the middle, yeah. Th this one you have to be symmetric because this one. Uh, yeah. What are those? So those one they are in a in a in a total wavelength from that one you have to, wave function have to be symmetric because s is equal to one and t have to be zero. Uh -huh. So in this particular s equal to one and t equal to zero, right? That's that's absolutely correct. Uh, that is that Karin Shuti? Yes. So Karin Shuti, this is absolutely absolutely correct because these guys are not here or here, right? And if we look at the picture, these are the only possibilities which are not here or here, right? These guys that we see for the scanium 42 pointing up, proton and neutrons, they're not here and they're not here, right? Which implies that we don't see them either here or here. And as Ganin Chuti say, all these guys <clears throat> are isospin S equal to one pointing up and uh, T equal to zero, right? So these guys that are pointing up because they can do so because they are not the same particle. And these states, which you see here, they are all T equal to zero, S equal to one. These other guys, all of them are T equal, S equal to zero, T equal to one. S equal to zero, T equal to one, right? We are in this particular case. And because the same, we have the same possibilities for the two uh, protons, the, the proton and neutron, and the two neutrons, the same, exactly the same. These guys actually are beautifully represented in titanium 42. Again, this is a six plus. Here we have in calcium 42. And also we have the six, four, and two in scandium 42 plus the zero plus, right? Whereas this guy is the only guy who has these guys, this uh, one plus, two, seven plus, three plus, five plus excitations. And these excitations, they are characterized by having proton and neutrons, one proton and one neutron pointing up to total isospin one, and T must be equal to zero there. You know, to fulfill the properties of an anti-symmetric wave function. So now, now is a good time to go to the NNDC. To go to the NNDC and say, okay, uh, let's investigate the situation a little bit further. And let's go to another triplet of isobaric analogs. We can take uh, the shards of nucleides uh, right here. Acro read um, sharp. Uh, we can say, okay, let's do, uh, let's investigate this chart here. And uh, we were on the calcium 42, scandium 42, titanium 42. You see these guys here? But we can do the same thing. If we do, uh, let me see. Here, for instance. Krypton 38, calcium 38, and argon 38. There will be, again, let me see. Uh, oh, let me go a little bit right here. 
Uh, let's see. I want to move it. Uh, I'm not holding it with this. Let me see. There we go. So we have another situation where we can have, uh, let me see, 19 and 19. That's calcium, uh, potassium 38. And then we have 20 and 18. And we have uh, 18 and 20 here. Okay. So we can have another possibility. And we investigate. Now we investigate ourselves and say, okay, I want to explore this far. And I want to, uh, to look. This is an exercise for you to do for, for, for next Friday. I want to look at these fellows, 38 uh, potassium. Then we have, uh, we say we have 38 potassium, then we have argon 38, argon 38, and calcium 38. So this has uh, 19 and 19. Then 38 calcium, which has 20 and 18. And here we have argon 38, which has 18 and 20. Again, again, we are going to assume that the extra, both of them has 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. And we have extra here, we have extra uh, two neutrons, right? Here we have extra uh, two protons. And here we have an extra one proton and one neutron, right? And we're going to apply the same thing. And we're going to build the level scheme for these guys. We're going to build the level scheme. And this is going to be our zero. But uh, I don't want to say anything. We're going to go to the NNDC. And we're going to go to calcium 38. And there, we're going to go to the ENSDF. ENSDF, that's the evaluation of data. That's the data which has been uh, evaluated already. And we go to uh, calcium 38, search, select all and make a PDF version. And here we have uh, 20, uh, cal uh, 38 calcium. NDC. And we put it in documents in lecturing nuclear structures, nuclear structure here. We open it up. And let's look at what is happening right here. Okay, so we're going to write down, we're going to write down, uh, You know, we have the zero, we have the two. Uh, and this doesn't, doesn't say anything here about ISSP. But generally, when you, when you compile things, you also uh, write down the ISSP quantum number on the state in particular. So this will be actually uh, t equal one. This will also be t equal one. But let's, I'm going to show you just these first two. So this one, the first, this is uh, a zero plus ground state, right? And then the second, the two plus is a two, two, one, three. So let's write it down, two, two, one, three. Zero, zero plus, there's a, there's a two plus, two, two, one, three. The same thing, there will be a two plus here and a two plus there. And they will be at similar energies. Zero plus, zero, zero, uh, zero plus. Excuse me. Let me see, I have to pick up this one. You may continue. 
as Prof was saying. Hey. All right, sorry guys, I had to to take care of the kids. As uh, my wife is in a field trip, I had to be be ready for, for action if something happens. So I was telling you that we have a zero, two plus, two plus, two plus, and all these guys, you can confirm that on the NNDC. So you're going to check. Prof, can you please, uh, can you please uh, again? Share the screen, right? Uh, let me see that. Yeah. So I am sharing now. So I'm telling you that these guys, these guys will have, uh, this will be T equal one. Uh, let me see, let's move this up here. This will also be T equal one. These will be T equal one because they are the same T equal one, T equal one, T equal one. So we are assigning, assigning as a spin quantum numbers quantum numbers to all two states, to excitation, right? To excited, excited, excited levels. And we will have anything which is similar, is the same about the same energy. The energy will, may change a little bit here and there, but every level which is the same will be T equal one, T equal one, T equal one. But there will be levels, and this is what I want you to investigate here, in particular in the in the in the potassium thirty-eight, which will be different, and they won't they won't be here, right? Here they won't be, and those levels they will be obviously t equal zero, and in the t equal zero, we know that the spins the will be pointing up. In the t equal one, we know that the spins are pointing up and down. So you see, without looking at the nucleus, we know by, by measuring the, the properties and looking at the similar, similar levels, you know, that at this triplet of isobaric analogs that we have described before, we can assign as a spin quantum numbers to those levels which are equal to each other. You know, by measuring the spin and parity, two plus, the, the zero plus, there will be a four plus here, four plus here, which will be the same, you know. I, I want you to go to the NNDC and investigate. Investigate, and each one, I want to investigate um, for different nuclei. You can go to the, to the chart of uh, nuclei here, the charts of nuclei, and say, okay, I'm going to investigate this, uh, and someone else is going to investigate for instance, uh, the actually there's a paper, a paper here uh, in the lecture notes. I wrote a very nice paper one time on a suspin, a suspin purity on, on the charge independence of the of these fellows. So at the end of this chapter, I mentioned this this paper. And you have here the different uh, triplets of isobaric analogs and different properties, electromagnetic properties, energies and electromagnetic properties down here. And I'm telling the 38, but also the 34 triplet, there's a, a 28 triplet. So if we go to the chart, the, someone can try the, the 30, 34. Uh, so 30 will be, Silicon 30, phosphorus 30, basically it's always the same. You need to find uh, one which has, um, uh, let me see, 30 is here. So that will be uh, 15, phosphorus 30 and 15. That will be the, the, the two possibilities, right? Uh, and then you have sulfur 30, which is 16 and 14. Let me see the 14 is here, right? And you will have another one. The, the third one will be silicon 30, which has 14 and 16, right? So the three of them, the three of them, the, the phosphorus 30, that will be 
15 and 15, one proton, one neutron, all of them will have 14, right? 14, and this will be 16 and 14. So this will have two extra protons. And the third one will be this guy here, uh, silicon 30, which will have two extra neutrons. These are the neutron numbers here. So this is another triplet. So I want you to come with different triplets. I don't want, I don't want you to come with the same triplet and everyone doing the same job. Another possibility is here, sodium 22, 11, 11. Then you have magnesium 22, which is 12, 10. And you have neon 22, which is 10, 12, right? This is another possibility. Another possibility is uh, here, 13, 13. And then you have 14, 12, and uh, 12, 14. This triplet here, right? So basically, you find yourself your triplet, and I want you to submit this as a, an assignment for Friday. It's easy. You know, you, what, you, your job is just to go there and go to the NDC, choose three of them, and tell me, okay, these are T equal one states, these are T equal zero states. Make a drawing like this with, you know, exact energies here. You know, whatever is the energy here, 2, 2, 1, 5, whatever it is, the energy is here, and then assign them an isospin quantum number to each of the levels. Is that clear? Do I see? Prof, uh... no. <laughs> Prof, there is a problem here. From using this example you give us for potassium, calcium, and argon. Uh, and if you go back to, to the sketch you, you provide, it seems that uh, um, uh, potassium is only good, uh, yeah. Hmm. The second one in the middle is only the one who, who T is supposed to be. Supposed to be zero. Yeah. Which one? Which one? All the others are supposed to have. Uh, yeah, like which potassium, one? Which one? Potassium, potassium thirty-eight. Potassium thirty-eight. Okay, potassium thirty-eight yeah. has nineteen here and nineteen. And nineteen here, right? Yeah. So, so it means so, AC so have the, this one has twenty here and eighteen here. So all of them, all of them, they have thirty-eight. You see, thirty-eight, thirty-eight, and thirty-eight, right? Mm -hmm. But and all of them has uh, 20, 18. So all of them has 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. So every, each one has a difference of extra two protons here, one proton, one neutron here, extra two neutrons here. See, they are all exactly the same, but you have either two protons, two neutrons. Can I go to the NNTC? Yeah, you can go to the NNDC and check it out. You go to the NNDC. This is the this is what you're going to do actually. That's the exercise. You go to the NNDC and investigate yourself. Show me this picture here. For a different, a different, a different, uh, a different triplet. I show you this triplet. So I want you to go to the NNDC and take your time and investigate and tell me. Assign. These are all we say t, t equal one, s equal zero, t equal one, t equal one, t equal one. I want you to assign as a spin quantum numbers to all these levels, right? And all these guys will be t equal zero. So this is in particular, there's a, an assignment also here. But uh, I just telling you the assignment itself. Uh huh. Find out from figure 3.2, which value of T cell corresponds to each member of the isobaric triplet and which could be uh, labeled as T equal zero and T equal one. We haven't introduced T Z so far, but T Z is simply M minus Z divided by two. So this uh, nuclei can also be labeled as by a T Z quantum number, which is the projection. And this is given by M uh, minus set divided by two. And this T set, this will be uh, 
minus one, this would be zero because M and Z is the same. And this will be plus one because N is 20. So 20 minus 18 will be two, two divided by two is equal to one, right? This will be minus one and this will be equal to zero. So there's a TZ quantum number. So when you say TZ is equal to minus one, you refer to this particular nucleus with the extra two, two protons. And when you refer to T zero, you refer to the nucleus, the nucleus with the same, the same number of proton and neutrons. And when you refer to the T set equal to plus one or T C equal to plus one, you refer to the one with extra two neutrons, right? Just a part of nomenclature. And this is the definition. Just a definition. Okay. So now your job actually to for this to sink in is very clear. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to make your level scheme. You're going to go to the NNDC and you're going to look at them and you're going to say, okay, these ones are T equal one. This one are T equal zero. This TC is equal one minus one and zero because of the, of the M minus Z equal to equal divided by two. Uh, I'm going to draw the two uh, protons or the two neutrons or the two uh, or the proton and neutron, how they are pointing up and down. So this is all the thing, everything I want you to draw in your level scheme. I want you to get the point that you know by measuring the angular momentum, measuring the energies of this level, the, the parity, we know how the proton and neutrons are pointing, you know, the spin quantum number is pointing up or down just by seeing uh, the, the, the result of isospin symmetry charge independence of the nuclear force works very beautifully for something which doesn't exist. All right. This is for today. I want you to explore. Now go to the NDC and write that level scheme, write the energies and see which ones are the same, which ones are different, and then assign yourself uh, a suspend quantum number to those levels. All right. Any questions? Manfred, you are very quiet. Buku. Vuka. Vuka Mac and Danny. Jafta. Any questions before we go? Let me see what is in the chat. No questions from me, Prof. Uh, Prof, sorry, Prof, what is T equal one? Okay, now you know what is T equal one, Jafta? That's where I'm getting lost. Leads, leads, Jafta, are you, are you okay now with the T equal one? T equal one means basically that S equal to zero. S equal to zero means that the points, the spins are pointing up and down. When the spins are pointing up and down, the total spin is zero. So to make an anti-symmetric wave function, which is how you describe fermions, S equal to zero, T must be equal to one. The total wave function, the total, uh, you must have the product of the two must be always an, an odd number. If it's an even, you have a symmetric wave function and you cannot describe fermions, right? This is just basic quantum mechanics. And Shuti, tell me, Everything clear now? Yeah, I think it's fine, sir. Good. If uh, if nothing, if something is comes uh, unclear in the process, just send me an email. Okay. All right. Luasi, how are you doing? Okay, are you good? Sir. Um, uh, one more thing is like if you want to assign t, you use this formula. Say t z is equal to n minus z over two. I mean the number of Proton. I, don't, I, don't, I don't really do. This is just a, 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 a way to label each nucleus. It's a way to label this nucleus. It could be, you know, in actually in particle physics, they use the opposite formula. In particle physics, they use T Z equal Z minus N divided by two. So this is just a nomenclature. I don't care about the, whether T C is equal minus one, zero plus one. At this particular stage, I want to know that when we look at the state, 
this guy, we know that the, the two spins are pointing up and down, right? So I want you to label T, not T, T set. T oh. set is okay. You can also put it, but it's just a, a simple formula here. It's just, you oh. know, 20, uh, in this case, neutrons will be 18 minus 20 will be minus two divided by two, this minus one, right? Oh. It's just a simple formula. What I'm really, I'm really about is for you to label these guys, the T equal one, S equals zero, T equal one, S equals zero. So you know that these guys are pointing up and down. These guys are doing the same thing, right? Sorry, prof. Tell me. Prof. Yeah. Um, is the T, Z, and the T the same? Are so the, T. Are the two the same? The T, C, and the T. No, they're not the same. Oh. The T, C is the projection of T. So TC, if you know, TC can be in this case zero minus one and plus one, right? Yeah. T is only one or zero. Okay, so it only um, the alternates between the two numbers like zero and one, depending on the value of S. Right. Okay. So T is either the, the T is what I'm really interested in right now. This fellow, I want you to label and to be. When you look at the nucleus, you must know what the nucleus is doing. You know, like when we look at the spectrum, the spectrum, would you have this particular pattern for, for a, a rigid rotor, right? We have this particular pattern for something which is vibrating. So now we compare three different nuclei. Um, by looking at them, we see, oh, look at this. These guys look exactly the same. So they must be doing something similar, right? What is the similar thing? how the spins are coupled, right? So this is the, the point I want you to make here, to click. And for that, we need to go to the NNDC and check it uh, and do it ourselves. I cannot, I cannot uh, feed you like baby penguins, right? I want you to go and explore. This is all about exploration. 